News, bringing you information of the Christian world. I'm your national news anchor, Dustin Pfeiffer. And for our first story tonight, numbers drop. In a recent study by the Cultural Research Center at Arizona University, so Arizona Christian University, showed a great shift between older churchgoers and younger churchgoers. And this is pretty obvious as we see nowadays as we see more older people in our churches rather than younger people. Um, the research showed that people between the ages of 18 to 36 are less likely to hold to biblical-based teachings, including the nature of God, original sin, salvation, creation, and life after death, and human purpose in biblical morality, instead going in favor with horoscopes, karma, evolution, and reincarnation. When it comes to personal salvation, 40% of people over 55 and over identify as born-again Christians, whereas only 16% of millennials meet the criteria. As well as holding to more therapeutic deism, which is a counterfeit version of cre uh, Christianity, uh, which focuses on one's, per uh, one's person rather than on God. So it's more focusing on themselves rather than on God. It is believed that this shift started 60 years ago by the baby boomer generation who in their time started to develop or wanted to develop an extreme shift in Christian thought and doctrine. The Unborn Child Dignity Act, which is our next story, on June 1st the Unborn Child Dignity Act will go into effect in the state of Tennessee. This bill stated that final dispensation of fetal remains by surgical abortion at an abortion facility must be by cremation or internment. Also, the bill will require facilities to pay for and provide for the cre cremation and internment of the fetal remains for surgical abortion uh, performed at that facility, unless that child's mother requests another location, which in part will um, put the bill onto the mother rather than on the abortion clinic. Janice Bowling, a member of the Tennessee Senate as well as of the Republican Party, stated, It's a tra tragedy in Tennessee that we regulate how veterinarians properly dispose of the remains of animals, but there are no regulations regarding human babies. These are the remains of human beings and should be treated as such. This new law corrects the oversight, ensures that the remains of unborn children are treated with dignity. Uh, did this, did this, this did not go without criticism as Planned Parenthood of Tennessee and Northern Mississippi criticized this bill as saying that this is a clear attempt to shame people uh, choosing abortion. Um, this is not the first uh, pro-life measures to, uh, set out by um, Tennessee. A few years back, Tennessee did require that a minimum of 48 hours was to be waited until and abortion can be sought after. Thank you for sticking with us. You're now, now we're going to take you over to our international port with your uh, anchor, John Cox. All right. Well, thank you, Dustin, for those reports. We'll be sure to follow those up with prayer, and we'll be sure to keep you all updated as we go further. And now let's head over for your international reports of the week. So we're starting in Ireland, where churches can finally meet again in person. Ever since March, evangelical churches have been holding 24-hour prayers for the church to be allowed to reopen. Ireland imposed some, some of the harshest lockdown restrictions. In the beginning, churches would voluntarily close, claiming to do so out of love for their neighbor. But after proving they could meet safely, they wanted to reopen. They were not allowed, and many were threatened with fines and arrests. Legal consultation was beginning to be sought, when the restrictions on churches were lifted. However, only 50 are allowed to be there at a time. This means that many pastors will have to hold multiple services each day to accommodate their congregation. Also, pastors are concerned as some may not return after so long being denied. Many people are relieved though because they miss their church families and they miss people and they just, they miss it. So this is some great news. And now in Nigeria for some not so great news. According to Intersociety Rule of Law, a rights group, that's a rights group, sorry, uh, 1,470 Christians were murdered with an additional 2,200 Christians abducted by jihadists within the first four months of this year, 2021. 
The Nigerian government continues to claim that these deaths and attacks are not religiously motivated, though the evidence proves to the contrary. Studies have shown that these deaths are because of jihadist groups targeting Christians, and many feel that the government needs to acknowledge this fact. And lastly, for your international reports, we are heading to Finland. So, I'm going to mispronounce these names and I do apologize. So, meet Pavi Rasain, a member of the Finnish parliament. She is now facing six years in prison for supposed hate speech. Her crime, you may ask? Publicly stating her Christian beliefs on marriage and sexuality. This began in 2019 when she criticized her church for hosting an LGBT event. She tweeted the leadership and it was accompanied by a Bible verse. This was apparently enough to silence her as she now faces prison for her beliefs and conviction to stand with biblical truth. Unfortunately, this is becoming all too common these days. The European Evangelical Alliance is demanding that Finland respect her beliefs and freedom of speech. The prosecution claims that she is not under investigation for her beliefs or even for stating them, but because it could arouse intolerance of homosexuals. Thomas Booker, General Secretary for the European Evangelical Alliance, wrote that Pavi does not cross that line, however, and that these actions are completely unjustified. So essentially, this is a woman who made her beliefs public, and because she is in a public eye, the government feels that it needs to imprison her for making her statements and beliefs about marriage public. Nowhere did she criticize people, nowhere did she insult people or arouse hate or intolerance or anything like that. She just made it clear where she stood and where the church should stand. And this is apparently enough to have her imprisoned for six years. As always, we do ask that you continue to pray for all these situations and pray for those who are doing the persecuting as well as for the persecuted. And now we will head over to your hot topic for the week. Thank you guys for sticking with us. I hope you are paying attention. You're paying attention to our national news and our international news, and that you are praying for the people involved in those incidents. Now we are going to go over to our hot topics, and today we have two big stories. And the first one, we are going to be talking about a Canadian pastor that was arrested. I'm sorry, Canadian Polish pastor that was arrested up in Calgary, Canada. John, you want to give us a little more on that? Yeah, so the pastor whose name is escaping me at the moment. Do you have the name? Arthur, uh, I'm sorry, Ar Ar Arthur Pulowski. Okay, Pastor Pulowski yeah. was running his church in Canada during the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, to make a long story short, he was arrested for running his church now. The reason this makes hot topic news is because of his behavior, I would really say, while he was arrested. Yeah, that, what, what he, his rhetoric is unacceptable for anybody in that position. I can understand being angry, but the stuff he was saying, this is stuff I would never, you know, I yeah, would never yeah, Why don't you read them some of the statements? So he called the Canadian police uh, Gestapo psychopaths, as well as Nazis. Now, I'm just going to tell you right now, those are very serious claims, especially against somebody. Um, understandable that he is trying to defend himself with rhetoric, but this cho his choice of words right here, even though he is Polish and uh, his parents or grandparents possibly lived during that era where they were oppressed by Nazi Germany, it is unacceptable for him to use that right now. Because this is, you know, because we're in an era of peace. Now, I'm not, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not condoning um, the Canadian police nor, nor the Canadian government for ordering his uh, arrest. But just his rhetoric needs to match with the uh, Christ, Christ like he's supposed to be as a pastor. Yes. You know, I can support him keeping his church open because he's feeding his flock. And I, we here at Many Tribes, One Kingdom do believe that the government government is out of bounds when they try to control the church mm -hmm. but his behavior as a christian especially as someone who's supposed to set an example for his flock this is unacceptable you know this is not yeah i would more say that there are other pastors who have handled this much better such as pastor james coates who was arrested for the same crime the same charges and pastor james coates didn't get aggressive or violent you know he didn't bend the knee. 
He didn't submit. And I'm, we're not saying at all that Pastor Pulaski should submit. We are saying, though, that he needs to behave in a Christian manner. Exactly. You know, whenever um, you condone yourself, to give you an example, um, the Martin Luther King, when he, you know, he started those protests, the one thing he set out to do was to make sure that they were peaceful, even though he was being attacked himself and his people were being attacked. Yes. People and being that, at the rally. Right. And he's... That approach wins because a gov- the government cannot control a um, an uncivil pro a, a, a riot. They cannot. The government can control a riot to make it look like that they're the heroes, but a peaceful protest they cannot control. Well, that's just it. Like if he were to behave in the same way that other pastors have, where they are defiant but also calm, mm-hmm. you know that would really show where the government is being unreasonable. Unfortunately, now he has stooped below their level, I would say, in his behavior. And now, you know, this this is the kind of person that people are pointing to these days when they talk about Christians. This is the kind of person people are pointing to to call us unreasonable or to call us any number of names you have to realize we're constantly being watched and no we shouldn't care what the world thinks about us personally but we should care about what our actions say about our faith you know and to bring the point home ephesians 6 yes i mean i mean that's it it goes without saying if you don't know what ephesians 6 says go go ahead and read it It, go read it. it it explains the armor of god very well and that is how every Christian is supposed to act, regardless whether you are a layperson or a pastor. Yes, or even more than that, we're supposed to act as Jesus would act. And I don't remember Jesus calling, you know, I don't remember Jesus calling the people who arrested him. I don't remember him calling them sodomites or Babylonians. No, it's a thing called passive resistance. Yes. Passive yeah. meaning that they're not going to open, he's not going to openly attack them. Um, but resistance he, meaning that he's not going to accept their way of life and will never condone their activities. Yeah. So what we would say to Pastor Pulowski and to his flock is that we we can support what you're doing in keeping your church open. We can support that, but we cannot support your behavior. And there were members of his congregation who were doing the same thing, you know, asking like that at one point they would ask the police, like, you know, hey, how does it feel to be a Nazi? And stuff like that. This is this is unacceptable. And this is behavior that is directly learned from the pastor. And we here at Many Tribes One Kingdom would just say this needs to stop. Exactly. And now we're going to go into our next story, which needs very little introduction because I doubt this has escaped any all- news, any any news service from wherever you are in, uh, in this country. Um, the Israeli Palestinian conflict or as well more directly to Israeli Hamas um, incidents that are going on over in the Middle East. For many of you who don't know, the Hamas a terrorist group launched missiles into Israel, Israel indiscriminately. Um, and Israel retaliated, rightfully so. Um, but now the international world is, is, well, many, some countries are condemning Israel for defending itself, saying that they're indiscriminately, they're reversing the stories where it's saying Israel is indiscriminately attacking Palestinian areas rather than them saying, oh, Israel is actually attacking um, military, military. M- military assets and targets that are being very strategic, strategic with their attacks. Yes. Uh, yes. Go ahead, John. A, you know, the thing is, It's the Hamas group who's been indiscriminately attacking Israel and has no problem hitting civilians and things like that. Israel has been very patient and has been very calm about this whole thing. And of course, they're going to defend themselves. I don't know anyone who's going to let you sit there and shoot missiles into their country and not retaliate in some way, shape or form. And so many people, well, not many, well, some, I will say some people who are unqualified to really speak on this matter, I would say, have tried to turn this around on Israel and blame Israel when the truth is Israel just wants peace. Yeah, they are willing to go to the peace negotiation. However, Israel's response to this, and more importantly, uh, their prime minister, unfortunately, I cannot pronounce his name, 
Um, and I do apologize, and I'm not going to attempt it because I know it's going to be fa- I don't want to be rude towards his name. Anyways, um, so he has taken a approach to say, not only is he going to retaliate and defend Israel, he's going to do so with heavy force in return, showing that Israel is not a defenseless country and that they are going to defend themselves with overwhelming force, not just to put down this, you know, this terrorist organization, but to continually to, to have this overwhelming presence to prevent any future attacks or planned attacks. Now, the United Nations Security Council is scheduled to meet on Sunday to discuss this very important issue. I believe they are calling for an emergency meeting um, of the Security Council to discuss the worsening violence between Israel and Palestinian mil- militants. Yes. And, you know, this is, it's unfortunate because it's been going on for the past 70 plus years, but at the same time, it's sad to say, but there's really nothing that can, unless everyone's willing to act like an adult, nothing can really be done. It, and I'm sad to say that, but there's been problems ever since Israel was granted their independence. And we here at Many Tribes, One Kingdom, we support Israel. Let's make that very clear. Yes, we also support peace in the Middle East as well. Yes. I mean, we, don't get, support, sorry, go we don't support unnecessary violence, but we do believe it's acceptable to defend yourself. And that's what Israel's doing here. They are defending themselves. And we as Christians recognize that, you know, the children of Israel were God's chosen people. So we still support them and we still respect them for who they are. And President Biden has said that Israel goes to say that he's quoted as saying that Israel does have the right to defend itself as again, any nation would. And in fact, the United States would exact this kind of exact the same response if it was attacked itself. Um, Absolutely. And I think it, it does bother me, I would say, that the people who want to sit there and criticize Israel, but what what is Israel supposed to do in this in, in this situation? You, I know, mean, they, you can't just let them sit there and attack you. They can't just sit there and take it. All that's going to do is increase attacks and harm civilians. Exactly. And if, in fact, it, the Israeli Defense Forces have exacted a stance of attacking solely military targets. There is no intention to harm any civilians. If any are, again, it was not Israel's response to harm any civilians in the matter. They are solely targeting military targets. Um, Now, with this, 40 senators are urging President Biden to halt uh, the the Iranian uh, nuclear deal because evidence has been come to light that Iran has been supplying Hamas. Um, with ma- weapons, as yes, well as also would... to continue to impose sanctions on Iran. Yes, and I think it's important that peace needs to come, and we we think it's important that the fighting needs to stop. But at the same time, Israel needs to be left alone. They're not trying to be the aggressors here, and we would like to say that again. You know, Israel is a peaceful country never has it started anything and i just want to point this out these are these are current attacks on israel you know that there is hate for israel considering after a massive show of force back in the six days war after israel took you know took down a an overwhelming force but yet you could tell that there is still hate because any country after losing a war like that would have ceased hostilities. But the fact that it's continuing to this day, it is ridiculous. And it is an honest hate for Israel. And we as Americans, or more importantly, we as Christians, from any corner of this globe, need to support Israel in this time now more than ever. Yes. And we condemn hate and we condemn violence. And we want to make it very clear. We do not hate anyone in Palestine and we do not hate Muslims. We do not hate anybody in the in the Arab area in the Arab nations over in the no, Middle East. Hate them. We pray we just, for them. Yes, we just believe that Israel needs to be left alone. Exactly. And we think that with the twenty plus Islamic nations in the area, we think that it's perfectly acceptable for there to be one Jewish nation. 
we do take issue that people seem to have problems with there being a single Jewish nation. But, and please note that Israel is the only Jewish nation in the world, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they are the, there are numerous other nations for other religions. Every other religion has at least two nations or more. Israel or uh, Judaism only has Israel. Now, that's not to say there aren't Jews across the world, but Israel is the only Jewish nation. Which means that they are a majority of their pop, a great, sorry, let me correct that, a great majority of their population, meaning around 80 to 90 percent of the population being Jewish. Don't quote me on those numbers. Yeah, please don't quote us on those numbers, but this is the official religion of the uh, Israel nation. And we would, to wrap things up, we would urge you to pray for the situation. We would urge you to pray for Israel. Pray for the Middle East, pray for the Arabic nations as well. Pray that there will be peace and that the violence and the hate will just all stop. That's what we ask you guys to pray for. We don't want aggression, you know, don't take to the comment section or anything like that and call for war or anything like that. We're not, we are not calling for war. Under no circumstances are we calling for war. No. We are just for Israel to defend herself and that we want there to be peace. Also, another add, add on to that prayer list, please do pray for the Security Council who's got to make, a, make an approach for the situation to help calm the Middle East. Pray that yes. God provokes Important. their hearts into the, right, into the right direction that will ultimately lead to the best peaceful solution for all nations involved and for all people involved to get the quickest solution on the ground. And yeah. with... Is there, go ahead. I believe that does it for our hot topics. Let's go over to our media report. report. Sticking with us, we are now on our media report with the top 10 songs according to iTunes. At number 10, we have Talking to Jesus featuring Brandon Lake uh, by Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music released on April 9th, 2021. At number 9, we have Be All Right by Evan Kraft, Denny Goki, and Red Me Too. Released September 11th of 2020. At number 8, we have You Say by Lauren Daigle. Released 20, July 13th, 2018. At number 7, we have Less Like Me by Zach Williams. Released October 4th, 2019. At number 6, we have Battle Belongs by Phil Wickham. Released September 4th, 2020. At number 5, we have Gyra featuring Chandler Moore and Naomi Rain. By Elevation Words of Maverick City Music, released March 26, 2021. At number four, we have Help Is On The Way, Maybe Tonight, by Toby Mac, released February 19, 2021. At number three, we have Good God Almighty, the radio version, by Crowder, released January 15, 2021. At number two, we have Hold On To Me, by Lauren Daigle, released February 26, 2021. At number one, we have It's Always Been You by Phil Wickham, released May 12th, 2021, which was this week. So I hope you guys go out and enjoy these songs. And now we'll go over to John with our Organization of the Week. And now we will close off with your Organization of the Week. So, Meet Compassion International. This is a Christian organization that seeks to sponsor children in areas of poverty. They also provide humanitarian aid as well as biblical education for these children. They are international wanting to help children wherever they need it. They are based in Colorado. They partner with churches to break the cycle of poverty for children around the world. Their three C's are Christ-centered. So while the people they help don't have to be Christian, they do provide them with gospel-centered education, and many do choose to accept Christ because of this. Children-focused, their goal is to help children through food and medical aid and education and church-based. They mostly partner with local churches of the region to provide the aid necessary for these children. So we will include a link in the description below, and we do strongly encourage you to consider making a donation to help their wonderful services. We here at Many Tribes One Kingdom love children and believe in helping out as much as you can. And if you have an organization that you would like to see featured in a future segment of MTalk News, just leave us a comment and we'll look into it. Local or, inter or international, as long as they're Christian and provide valuable services for the kingdom of God, we'd love to see them featured. 
All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have a great day. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.